In this video, we will show you how to get 5 volt USB power directly from a solar panel and without a battery pack. That way you can charge your phone, any USB devices directly from the power of the sun. Previously, I made this contraption where it has a solar panel, a charge controller and a battery pack. And I can charge my phone with this USB port here. But this requires a battery pack and a charge controller. This method, you only need a solar panel and that's it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the solar panel directly to this uh, 12 volt socket extension here. And then I'm going to plug this to the socket. And that will provide the 5 volt USB port. And I've got three different 12 volt to 5 volt USB converters here. This one is a cheap converter from a dollar store. This one is a little bit more expensive and it's uh, advertised at a uh, 2 amp USB port. This one here is. Um, it's made by Sprint and it's got a USB port at the other end. It's a single unit. It's made by Sprint but it works with anything that has a USB port. I also have this here, this board here. So this board will convert a solar panel voltage and convert it down to 5 volt USB port on the other end. Let me show you my setup here. I have a regular 12 volt socket extension. It has a 12 volt socket on this end where you plug in your car cigarette lighter. And you got three extra extension of the 12 volt socket. It also has a USB port right here. I use alligator clips to hook it up to my 12 volt solar panel. And this is a 10 watt 12 volt solar panel. The open circuit voltage is about 20 volts. Here you can see the solar panel is putting out about 16 and a half volts. It's a bit shady right now, so it's less, but usually around 18 to 20 volts. I'm gonna use these to charge the phone, and my phone got an amp meter program to show how many amp the charger is providing to the phone. First up, the USB port right on the uh, 12 volt socket extension but this one doesn't work really well because uh, it doesn't provide enough current see here it says low electric current and it doesn't even register the current on this program this is another program that I have to measure the charging current and it's actually charging the phone at 140 milliamp you can see the charging icon uh, my battery right here So it's charging but at a uh, low current Next is my dual USB charger. You can see the blue lights lit up on the charger And it's charging my battery at 1000 milliamp so it works great on this one again It's all hooked up to my 12 volts solar panel directly check on this again 1028 milliamp so about 1 amp next is my cheap charger from a dollar store it has a single USB port Let's plug this in you see the light lit up plugged in see what we got here charging the phone at 843 milliamp so it works great the last one is the single unit USB charger it's got a ring of LED lights here would glow when I plug it in so let's try this Okay, lights on. It's charging at 622 milliamp. 
This is the Sprint single unit charger. So it works great also. So next, I'm going to use this board to charge my phone directly from the solar panel. It comes with a very nice plastic case and on this board it's got an input side and the output side. The input side can take between 5 volts to 20 volts so it's very versatile. So not only can you use this with a solar panel, you can also use it with anything between 5 volts and 20 volts. So on this end, this is the input side. Turn it around here. The terminal markings, they're not very clear, but you look hard enough, that's a positive sign and that's the negative sign. It's pretty weird the way they mark it on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this terminal to my XT60 connector. That way I can connect this board to different power sources. Uh, like different kinds of solar panel, uh, different power supply, or even different kinds of batteries. Alright, so here we go. Solder my wire to it with the XT60 connector. I made an opening on the plastic cover so that I can uh, slide my wire through the opening now I can close the cover uh, it looks nice and neat first is my 12 volt solar panel let's plug it in You can hear the ding from my phone, so it's charging. Let's see how much it is charging. 916 milliamp. It works great. Let's see what we got now 1000 milliamp. There we go, works great. So next I have a 6 volt solar panel. And this panel has an open circuit voltage of about between 9 to 11 volts. I want to see if this board will work with a lower voltage panel. It should, but uh, let's uh, give it a try. So here we go. Let's plug it in. You can hear the ding from my phone, it's charging. There we go, 591 milliamp. 584. So it works great with the 6 volts panel. 614. Next, I got a whole bunch of DC power supplies and I want to see if these will work with this board here. 5 volts, 9, 12, 18. First is my 5 volt phone charger. I also connect it to my kilowatt meter. I want to see how many watts it consumes. So, are you ready? Boom. It's not working. It doesn't work with 5 volts. So my phone is still not charging and this say uh, connect your charger. So it's it's not register. Let's check on the voltage here. Let's see what we got. Five volts input. But not enough to run the board. So my phone is not charging. Next, I'm gonna nine volt power supply. This one got a phantom load, it's not being connected yet, but it already consumes 1 watt. So let's plug it in. Here we go. Phone turns on, charging. 
let's see how much power it's gonna charge the phone then there we go 400 milliamp and 13 watts next 12 volt power supply contact charging at 9 watts 1000 milliamp so 12 volts definitely works better and more efficient too next laptop power supply at 18 volts Charging 8 watts at 1000 milliamp. One last thing I want to test is the Apple power adapter. This one runs at 24.5 volt DC. This is the Apple iBook adapter. This adapter is reaching the limit of this board. This board is only rated at from 5 to 20 volts DC. And you look at the capacitor here, it's 25 volts. So it shouldn't go over 25 volts, otherwise it will burn this board. And this charger is very close to 25 volts. So it's reaching the limit of this board here. I solder a couple wires so I can easily do this experiment. So hopefully it doesn't burn up this board. Let's try it. Alright, here we go. You ready? It works! At 25 volt DC. Charging at 1000 milliamp. Zoom in here. Looks great, even at 25 volts. So let's see what we got on this input terminal here. 24 and a half volts DC. There we go. It right, it's rated at 20 volts, but still works at around 25 volts. What we got here? 1,021 milliamp. Next, I've got a few batteries here I want to test from left to right. 8.4 volt 2S lithium ion battery pack, 12 volt lead acid battery, 20 volts the volt power 2 battery, and 24 volts cobalt power 2 battery. So there you have it, this board is very versatile, very useful and it works with anything that is below 25 volts DC. The only downside is that it's not readily available and you have to order it online and usually from all the way from the other side of the world so you have to wait like what, a few weeks, maybe a few months in order to get it. And on the other hand, this one here is available everywhere, but it only works with a solar panel or in this lot only a 12 volt power supply and that's about it. And that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.